Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today, we'll be talking about the super hit NFT soccer card game, So Rare, and how you can earn money in it. Stick to the end for amazing facts about the game. Like, comment, and subscribe if you like today's video. Without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? So Rare is a football-themed fantasy game in which players purchase, sell, trade, and manage a virtual team of digital player cards. The game, which was developed in 2018 by Nicholas Julia and Adrian Montfort, makes use of blockchain technology, which is based on Ethereum. So Rare is a blockchain-based platform that allows players to manage virtual teams of five football players made up of blockchain cards. The performance of their players on a real-world soccer field determines their ranking, and points are awarded to the top-ranked teams. Just as they are in traditional fantasy football, some of the cards are licensed digital collectibles, while others are unlicensed, limited, rare, super rare, and unique cards. Because of the use of blockchain technology, the digital cards have a measurable and provable scarcity. So Rare secures the ownership and distribution of cards through the use of the Ethereum blockchain network, which serves as the foundation of the system. The number of cards available is limited, and cards cannot be changed, duplicated, or deleted once they have been printed. Each player card is represented as a non-fungible token on the Ethereum blockchain. According to the ERC721 token standard, each player card is one of a kind and is owned personally by the gamer. This ownership is verified through the blockchain, allowing the card's value to appreciate or depreciate in response to market conditions. Because of the licensing agreements, so Rare has signed with leagues such as the K-League and clubs such as Real Madrid. The So Rare cards are branded with the official season's players' photos and names, allowing the cards to stand out from the crowd. Pre-seed funding of €550,000 was announced in May 2019 with the participation of tech entrepreneur Xavier Neal among those who contributed to the round. In July 2020, the company raised $4 million from a number of celebrities, including German Football World Cup champion Andre Scherla. Furthermore, Ubisoft, eVentures, Partech, and Consensus have all backed them. In December 2020, the company raised an additional $3.5 million with the help of players such as World Cup champion Gerard Peake. As of 29th of June in the year 2021, there are a total of 140 clubs participating in the game. When compared to the previous month, this represents an increase of more than 50 additional club sides. Currently, there are 30 clubs from major league soccer clubs that do not have a license to play. Instead, so Rare has signed a deal with the Major League Players Association, which means that portraits of every single player wearing uniforms of those teams will appear in the game, with the exception of the image rights of the Major League Soccer and its clubs. So Rare has been granted the license by the Belgian Jupiler Pro League. API access to So Rare's public data is available through their website. A number of websites make use of these data to provide information or to host site games. So Rare Data is a data website that collects player scores and card prices in order to assist managers in their decision making. So Rare Brag is a side game that allows players to create private leagues and compete against other managers on a weekly basis. So Rare Mega, a side game in which players compete against other managers via matchmaking with team sizes ranging from 3 to 8 So Rare cards. What is the best way to make money on So Rare? One of the most compelling reasons for people to invest in So Rare is the wide range of opportunities for earning money on the platform. There are numerous opportunities to increase the value of your investment, and new ones appear on a daily basis. We have a number of features that will keep your wallet topped up on a consistent basis. Whether it's through building a terrifying competitive fleet of SO5 teams, scouting the market for the best cards to flip quickly, or discovering the next future stars first, there is no risk without reward. My first piece of advice would always be focused on gameplay. So Rare is notable for the fact that the NFTs on the platform are actually useful, rather than simply being there for aesthetic purposes only. The fact that I could use the cards I purchased in conjunction with the real-life fixtures was the most compelling reason for me to get involved. Because of the pleasure I derive from each game week, it's easy to forget that we are extremely fortunate in that we have a relatively simple way to earn Ethereum rewards on a weekly basis, and in many cases, on two separate occasions per week. Since I began entering decent lineups at the end of February, I've won 0.11 Ethereum, roughly 184 euros, and two cards, both of which were unfortunate for me, and not great cards. 
Solely through the global D4 Ethereum prize pool, there have been 26 game weeks so far in the year 2021. The opportunity to win 0.52 Ethereum or 872 euros in just over 4 months simply by beating the game represents a significant financial gain. Obviously, it's unlikely that you'll achieve 250 points every single week. But even if you achieve 205 points each time, that's 0.26 Ethereum, which is more than 400 euros. When you factor in the possibility of winning cards on a weekly basis, the importance of putting together a strong team and participating in the game grows even more. Ideally, while your team is generating rewards for you, you would like them to be increasing value at the same time. It's expected that as more and more people sign up to use a platform, there will be an increase in the demand for different players. Take a look at the graph below and notice how the number of users with different amounts of cards has grown over a period of months. Good SO5 scores are in high demand at all times. I only sell them when I'm making a profit on a player and there are frequently excellent opportunities to resell yours. But who could you bring in to fill in for him or her? Investigate the infirmary to get the quick return on investment on an individual player. My best advice is to sign up a player who is out of commission due to injury. Particularly, if it's a player who will be returning to the team in the near future, the majority of users will look to sell a player immediately after they suffer an injury rather than keeping them until they recover. This could be due to the fact that they need to raise funds to replace them, that they want to sell before a price drop is anticipated, or that they do not simply want a non-playing player in their collection. The result is usually a rush to sell and a large number of undercut listings, which combined with the lack of demand for the player results in a decrease in the price. This is an excellent opportunity for the most patient user to swoop in and snag a great deal on their purchase. Using a little research, you can learn more about what the player is like when he's healthy in terms of his performance scores, market value or future potential. If the injury is only a minor one, it's usually only a few weeks before the player is back to his old self and his market value is rising once more. Take for example, Mark Demers, whom I purchased for less than 65 euros a couple of weeks ago. He returned to action over the weekend and is now worth an additional 20 euros in value. His previous performances have demonstrated that he is capable of scoring 90 points or more in games. If he is able to achieve those levels again, his value will skyrocket even higher. This is also true for leagues that take place during the off-season. So, be sure to use the So Rare Season Planner to determine when you will need to have your players available. There were some bargains in the K-League, J-League, and MLS in January, but now these players are the ones whose prices have remained stable. While the prices of European players have begun to decline as their respective seasons come to a close, sell when the market is at its zenith. If you hold on to players until they have a particularly productive week, you will be able to maximize the amount of money. Take the case for Milan Van Avec, for instance. After a couple of poor performances, he experienced a slight resurgence and was available for purchase for 0.11 Ethereum, approximately 165 euros at the time. In the previous weekend, he achieved a perfect 100 score and all of his copies listed at 0.145 Ethereum or 218 euros and lower were snapped up almost immediately. Three days later, he sold for 0.17 Ethereum or 256 euros, a tenfold increase. If you've been holding him for several weeks, you could have received an uplift of up to 0.06 Ethereum or 91 euros simply by waiting for one good game. In a similar vein, you can watch games in real time and try to take advantage of the situation. A player who's having an excellent run and whose SO5 score is looking good might want to look into the current market to see if there are any inexpensive copies available to purchase. If you are the first to notice a significant injury in an important player, it may be worthwhile to travel to the location where the player is expected to be replaced for the next batch of fixtures. This is especially true if the player is a goalkeeper. Bring in the young people. This is a popular option for a large number of managers and so rare, primarily because anyone who comes from a football manager or even FIFA background enjoys discovering a young sensation. Furthermore, because of the utility of so rare, we could get more than 15 years out of some of the younger players on the platform who put in outstanding performances. This one requires patience, especially if you're picking up players who aren't yet in the first team. However, if you scout out a future star and buy in bulk before he becomes well known, then this is the most satisfaction you can get from making money on so rare. Early bird catches the worm. 
Finally, I have some advice for those of you who are more of a morning person than I am. Auctions that end in the wee hours of the morning are the best places to look for good deals on quality items. When auctions end before 7 a.m. GMT, I've seen players on my radar sell for more than 100 euros, less than their most recent selling prices, which is a significant saving. Perfect for anyone who works a night shift. Or if you see a few players you like, set an alarm for the next morning, grab some snacks, and settle in for a morning at the auction house with your friends. Difference between the auctions and so rarerdata.com and the others is difficult to track because they track when the transfer actually occurs rather than when the auction concludes. But I know this because I tried to buy Ideguchi here last month and the two lower price auctions here finished between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. GMT, whereas the others all finished during the daytime. So, that's all for today, folks. I hope you liked today's video and found it informative. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe and turn your notifications on. Do comment about what kind of videos you would like to see next. I'll see you guys in the next one. Be safe and adios.